Good morning! Welcome to Lemon Juice for the Soul. This is our regular vitamin for our soul. And this is recorded regularly. And if you want to be notified, just press subscribe. This morning, let me read the verse from uh, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 30 and the first part of verse 31 it read and why should we ourselves risk our lives hour by hour for i swear dear brothers and sisters that i face death daily this is written by apostle paul to the christians in corinth actually the context of this is that Paul is trying to explain to the Christian in Corinth the resurrection. He is explaining that this is the gospel. Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. And if Jesus Christ had risen from the dead, we too who believe in Jesus Christ will rise after we died. So there is life after death. So he's trying to explain about that gospel. This morning, I would like to show you this picture. This is the picture of the hognose snake. The hognose snake flipped over on its back and coiled itself up into a neat coil. It lay seemingly lifeless, pretending to be dead in the presence of danger. The hognose snake is a peculiar animal. It possesses all the weapon a snake would need to fend off a would-be attacker. It has size on its side. It looks menacing in that at least in a distance it could look like a rattlesnake. And it has, yeah, it has some very sharp teeth although it is not poisonous and there are few animals that would choose to mess with it yet when threatened it prefers to play dead despite of both offensive and defensive tools that god has given it it seems odd that given the choice to fend off danger it almost always chooses to play dead rather than confront it how like that snake we as Christians often are. God gave us all the tools in, the, in His Word to not only defend ourselves, but also to go on the offensive against sin. Yet, when we are threatened, we prefer to play dead and hope that the evil we are confronted by will simply pass us by. There's an old story about a man who tried to save the city of Sodom. So he tried to save the city of Sodom from destruction by warning the citizen. He kept on shouting, screaming on the top of his lungs to tell to the city of Sodom that they should repent from their sins because God will destroy them. But nothing has happened. People ignored him. One day, Someone asked the man, Why bother everyone? You cannot change them. Then the man replied, Maybe I cannot change them. But I still shout and scream to prevent them from changing me. And there's a point on what he says. Yes, he kept on shouting even though he knew that he cannot change them. But the point is not only to encourage people to change themselves, but if he will fail that, at least he cannot prevent those people from changing him. Lot was a righteous man. In the book of 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 7, it shows how righteous he is. It says, But God also rescued Lot out of Sodom because he was a righteous man 
who was sick of the shameful immorality of the wicked people around him. Lot knew how wicked the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And yet, Lot chose to dwell in the cities where there was great wickedness. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 12, it read, So Abraham settled in the land of Canaan, and Lot moved his tent to a place near Sodom and settled among the cities of the plain. But the people of this area were extremely wicked and constantly sinned against the Lord. And Lot knew about it. Actually, there was an instance uh, when Sodom was invaded by hostile kings. He was captured. Even after Abraham rescued Lot, he was still drawn back to that wicked city, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. What a contrast. His nephew and his uncle Abraham trusted God, both of them, prayed for the righteous, and lived a moral life, both of them, Lot and Abraham. But Lot was oppressed with the filthy conduct of the wicked generation and wicked cities where he lived at. Although the sin of his day bothered him, he apparently said little about it. The Bible tells us that when we are made new in Christ, we must die every day. We should have that readiness to die every day into this world. I guess it is in how we wish to define that death that makes all the difference. The point is like like the snake that we are talking about, the hognose snake. When confronted by danger, it prefers to play dead rather than to react. We can play dead and hope that dangers go away. Or we can die. We can choose to put them off and bite into them with the teeth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God has given us all the equipment that we need from His words. It is up to us to how we choose to use it. The application is that we are living in this wicked generation. Are we like Lot who keep his mouth shut while around him are all wickedness? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. Heavenly Father, truly we, we have to do something. Heavenly Father, truly we can see the wickedness around us. Heavenly Father, we pray and we ask for your forgiveness for the many times that we kept our mouth shut. Heavenly Father, you had equipped us with the power of your word. And Heavenly Father, you have saved us to be the salt of this world. Heavenly Father, our world is rotting. And we have the power within us through your word. Open our eyes. Allow us to be the salt of this world. Heavenly Father, it might be dangerous, but you have changed us. You have saved us. Help us to give our contribution in your kingdom. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Good morning!